Ahoy! Captain Benzie here, coming at you with an acting on instinct. Today I just wanted to go over the patch notes for update 1.3.1, the balance changes for the various different units. Um, this video is a little bit longer than some of my other content, just because there is a fair amount to cover in there and a few things to give my thoughts on. That said, I'm not adding any flashy graphics or anything overly exciting to watching this, so if you just want to put the video on in the background while you make some tea or play a couple of games of Rivals and listen to what I think, go for it. So here we have the balance update notes. I'm not going to cover the challenge battle bit, as ultimately if you watch my challenge battle video, everything that's here is covered in that video. So let's just skip past that down to the units themselves and have a look. So general meta, first of all, faster has been added. Um, you'll notice in patch notes they sometimes give speeds as like 5.2 or 4.5. In the game, these were either slow, slowest, average, or far, average, fast, or fastest. Having a faster means we've got a bit more differentiation between fast and fastest, which is nice. Looking at the units themselves, starting with GDI, the APC. Aircraft damage up to 90, infantry damage up to 90, attack speed increased to 0.85. Those are nice little buffs. Ultimately, the APC isn't a bad unit at all right now. It just does its job that little bit better. Drone swarms. Drone swarms now damage to infantry up to 30, health decreased to 220, speed increased to faster, hence that little change we saw earlier. I think this is a case of that the laser, squ uh, laser drone squad has come out and it's done really quite well. It's shown that there can be a nice little niche for drones. Drones are not as tanky as they used to be now. Their faster speed, which they were at fastest before they got some heavy nerfs shortly after their release, um, bringing them back up to faster and increasing their infantry damage whilst also just making them that bit more fragile. That's going to be interesting. I'd like to see how that affects things like the, uh, the No Harvester GDI deck. Certainly drones become a little bit more viable in all ways there. Be nice to see some decks running those. Strong Arms Turret loses its stealth detection. Okay. Mammoth Tanks. Cost is decreased to 230 from 250. Turret turn speed increased to 200. So the turret turns twice as fast now. The problem we've had with Mammoth Tanks is that ultimately at 250, by time you can afford to get one onto the board, one of two things. Either you've already lost the game and building a Mammoth Tank, it's not going to be able to have any impact. By time you can build it, it just slowly trundles out, doesn't shoot anything, and the game ends. Alternatively, if you can get a Mammoth Tank out and it actually is able to do something, it probably means you were so far ahead in the game anyway you didn't really need to build the Mammoth Tank. It kind of just becomes a, the unit equivalent of blowing the Raspberry at your opponent, I suppose. Reducing the cost, increasing the turret turn speed just means by time you have enough Tiberium to get a Mammoth Tank out, it actually does some damage and has an impact on the game. Big thumbs up, all happy with that one. MG squads, turn speed increased to 200, up from 120. Talking about the turret turn speed, if you've ever watched uh, like the MG squad, you can distract an MG squad by drawing its attention, say, to the north of the map, then rush a flame trooper unit into the south. Suddenly, it takes ages for it to swing back round, the flame trooper unit is already in base contact, and the MG squad just dies. People have been asking for a buff to MG squads, they've been having some difficulty running them. I think anything like movement speed increase, setup reduction, or damage increase would have made uh, MGs absolutely oppressive, the way they are. So I think that's a nice little buff. It remains to be seen how that affects it, but I genuinely think that makes MG squads that little bit easier to use and more viable. Orcas. Missiles increased to 4 from 2, damage decreased to 510 from 1020. So an Orca's overall damage is still the same. This just means it can kill more than two things in one go. And it also means that anything that it would kill in sort of one and a bit hits, it now kills in three. Leaving that extra rocket for faster reload time, or indeed just for like hitting something else quickly on the way past. Predator tanks. Health decreased to 2910, down from 3000. To me, that's smoothing out, smoothing out the edges, just making it so that little bits of training or little level differences don't suddenly flip-flop a massive uh, a massive discrepancy in how the unit works. That's not going to take uh, Predator tanks out of the meta anytime soon. Shockwave squads. Well, hey, at long last we get some changes to shockwaves. Health has been decreased to 400, damage increased to 150. That's a pretty big change. 
That health decrease means that a shockwave squad is going to die to anything that should kill infantry much faster. Things like rhinos, talons, venoms, confessors, I suppose, anything like that will now kill shockwaves that little bit faster. The damage increase, however, means that those units still will deal with the stuff they're supposed to deal with. They will still melt through infantry. They will melt through uh, riflemen. They'll melt through laser squads. They'll melt through any infantry that can get in their way. In fact, they'll actually do that a little bit faster now, as long as it's not something that's supposed to shred them. War Dogs. Speed decreased to faster, was fastest. Good. This means that we can stop having dr uh, dogs run across the battlefield and block your harvester for half the game. And health decreased to 300. They're still going to take four shots from tanks and pit bulls, but they're going to die to missile squads and laser squads. I hope that's not a significant enough nerf that two war dog squadrons can no longer uh, take out a, a single missile squad. I like that interaction. I think that's an important sort of balancing point for this unit. So what we're seeing there, again, war dogs are still going to be meta. They're still going to work. They're still a great opener for the war factory. They're still going to block really nicely for your MLRS, which now that I'm looking at it doesn't appear to have any nerfs this patch. Good. Didn't think it needed it. Whether or not the dog changes the meta, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think we're still going to be seeing that an awful lot, but it remains to be seen. Wolverines, damage to vehicles decreased to 15. That's fine. Wolverines were never supposed to take out uh, vehicles anyway, so happy days with all of that. Zone Troopers, structure damage increased to 620 from 100. Now, I know the reason behind this is that ultimately, like, Strong Arms turret just melts Zone Troopers, cuts through them. Um, because there were, as it says here, there, there were no early, uh, early counters for them. I don't think this is going to make Zone Trooper base rushing a thing. If you do try base rushing with Zone Troopers and you're successful, please do let me know. I would love to feature that replay and give it an analysis and laugh my head off. I really don't see it as being a thing, though. This, to me, is just getting them in, in into line with their cost. Um, they should ultimately be able to deal a decent bit of damage to Strong Arms Turret or Kane's Obelisk. So yeah, no MLRS changes there, but we do get the shockwave change. That's quite big. Changes to the MG squad, the drone swarm, and the orca. That certainly makes GDI Air that little bit more viable. I don't think orcas are quite where they need to be yet, but it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> My strong arm air decks loving these changes, as I think, as I said, will the uh, harvesterless GDI deck. For Nod. The Avatar raising the cost to match its GDI counterpart to 230, so it comes out the same time as a Mammoth Tank now. Not an issue with that. I think the Avatar was coming out at pretty much about the right time, so half a second later, I'm fine with that. That's not an issue for me at all. The Avatar is still going to have an impact. It's still going to be good fun to run it. It's still going to be easy to shut down if you can control the early game. Basilisk's health decreased to 2,500 from 3,000. Fantastic. This just means that we're now looking at a case of uh, if you're running Talons or Banshees because you don't have Phantoms or Hammerheads, you can actually deal with a Basilisk that little bit better. It's still going to absolutely wreck everything at ground level, but you do just have that little bit easier of a time getting rid of one of them. Confessors. Confessor damage increased uh, to infantry and aircraft, decreased to vehicles. Like with the Wolverines, that's absolutely fine to me. Wolverine... Uh, Confessors were never meant to deal that much damage to vehicles. The infantry and aircraft, that's a buff to them. The cost decreased to 100. That's a big buff to them. Confessors now come out earlier. They do more to the things that they're supposed to counter. They're still going to buff up your other units. Quite frankly, who cares that Confessors do less damage to vehicles? You can have a laser squad nearby and that's going to melt through the vehicles anyway. Cyborgs. Structure damage increased to 400 up from 100. They do have EMP, which is why this is lower than uh, Zone Troopers had. Um, again, I don't see base rushing or anything's going to be a, a, a big problem there with, with cyborgs. It's just a buff to a unit in a way that ultimately I don't think really affects them. Flame troopers get the same treatment as shockwaves. Fantastic. They die to things that are supposed to kill them, but they still kill the things that they're supposed to kill. If you're looking at these patch notes and wondering why flame troopers damage is 75, whereas shockwaves is 150, it's because shockwaves have one gun that they fire, whereas the flame troopers have a gun on each arm, they fire twice in the same firing duration, so that's exactly the same unit, exactly the same stat, just slightly different animation. Kane's Ob Obelisk of Light, Stealth Detection Removed. 
Okay. <laughs> wow. Inferno, health increased to 1570, damage to vehicles increased to 2040. Those are such minor changes in the long run that I think, as it says here, that's ultimately just to stop a slight change in levels, suddenly making an, uh, an Inferno usable or unusable. They're in a great place in the meta right now. That's not going to suddenly make them unbelievably powerful, just smooths out the cracks. Phantoms, damage increased to 720, EMP duration decreased to 4, health decreased to 1650. So mainly nerfs, but I actually think that's a buff. Phantoms are supposed to be hit and run. The fact that a level 10 hammerhead wouldn't take out a level 11 banshee was kind of annoying. So here, that damage increase off the top of my head, I think that is enough for them to take out a level's difference. That's great. The EMP duration just means that they're not going to be able to sit in front of a hammerhead and tank it. You are actually going to have to micro these guys in order to get the best out of them. Phantoms are a fantastic anti-air unit. I do think if you're just splashing into the, uh, the air tower for some anti-air, that for the most part, the Banshee's going to do a better job than the Phantom. Phantom works best as air support for a heavy Nord air deck. This just reinforces that. Rockworms, pop-up damage cooldown decreased to 6 seconds. Pop-up damage cooldown is something I didn't even know was a thing until recently. I just assumed every time a rockworm unburrowed, it did its damage. Apparently there was a cooldown of 10 seconds on that, so you could burrow it and unburrow and it wouldn't do anything. Makes sense, I guess. It stops you just spamming the burrow unburrow. But at the same token, is this going to make rockworms suddenly viable and worth running in a deck? No. Nod, de Nod uh, tech, as far as I'm concerned, is is still trash. It's. I wish it wasn't. I really wish it wasn't. I love rockworms to pieces. I love artillery. I love so much of the G uh, of the Nod tech, but it is not going to be as viable as GDI tech. Even in the lower ranks, I don't see it. It's going to be a big thing. Scorpion tanks again are getting the edges shaved off them, taking the health down to two three two five. That seems to me like with the predator tanks more of a level 10 compared to level 10.3 there's not going to be a huge difference between those you know interactions are still going to be the same things that should kill them still kill them things that shouldn't kill uh, should die to them still die to them we're, we're not going to see an end of a war factory meta for a while here notice here that giga cannons and mlrs are missing from this list so those are keeping the same we are still going to have a heavy war factory meta widowmaker's cost reduced to 80 Fantastic. It has annoyed me so much that Widowmakers have ultimately been nerfed so heavily to the point they were worse than Wolverines and, and had a cost increase. Now they are brought back into line. Again, does this make Nod Tech viable? Does it make Widowmakers viable? Yeah. Yeah, I think it actually does. That's a big change for Widowmakers, even though they lose a bit of damage to vehicles. Again, they're not supposed to melt through vehicles. They're for anti-air and anti-infantry. Both of those things they do fairly well. At 80 cost, I'm happy for that. That makes a nice little splash, and that might see a place in my Confessor deck, or probably not my Confessor deck, but they'll see, see space in a couple of my tech decks. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts regarding the unit changes in Update 1.3.1, but I'd be interested to know what you think. Do you run any of these units and are super excited by some of the buffs? Do any of the nerfs feel unnecessary or too much to you? How do you think the meta is going to change after this? Let me know in the comments below. Happy sailing, and see you on the battlefield.